Hello guys, thank you for stopping by the channel. We are about to go into a Zoom meeting here shortly and I wanted to shout out before we get started in the Zoom meeting, I wanted to shout out two ladies that are in their 50s and they just started their YouTube channel. I told you guys that I would be doing that on Wednesdays. So I wanna shout these two ladies out. But before I shout them out, I want to say, let me put you down a little bit so you'll be able to see me. But we're gonna have our Zoom, we're gonna have a new little spot for the Zoom meeting today. So um, guys, I wanted to make sure that I tell you before I shout them out, go and subscribe to their channel. All of these people are people under a thousand, so we are trying to get them at the thousand mark. At the thousand mark, is at the point to where you can be monetized on YouTube. And I'm trying to support my sisters and brothers. So if you are new to YouTube, you are under a thousand subscribers, you're 50 years old, as long as you are subscribed to my channel, I will then give you a shout out on a Wednesday. I give you one shout out. If you refer someone to the channel and let me know and they subscribe, I'll give you another shout out but that is what we're doing. So the very first one is going to be uh, a friend of mine. Her name is Joy Joyce and I'm, her channel is Joy. And I will show you her um, channel here. Go and subscribe to her channel. I believe she has a few, uh, you have to have at least three videos up. She has some videos up for you guys to see. And it's a really nice channel. Just go and support my girl. And not, even though she's a friend of mine, I still want you guys to support her. Make sure that you support both of these ladies. And this one here is Joyce. And then my second one is going to be this lady here. Please go, I don't know her personally and it doesn't matter. I don't have to know any of you guys to do this. Make sure that you go and support her channel. She is also under a thousand. We want to get these ladies to a thousand, y'all. I have 20,000 subscribers on this channel. There is no way that by the weekend, these ladies can't be at a thousand on their, but they still have to get their 4,000 watch hours in order to be monetized. But at least let's do that. Let's get them to a thousand. And after you have watched this video, which this video is going to be with me and the gentleman telling you about his business. So please stay tuned and please stay on. But make sure you go subscribe to both of these ladies. Let's get them to a thousand. Now, once you go and subscribe to their channel, I want you to come back to this video and let me know that you did subscribe to both of the ladies. Let's support each other. That's what this channel is all about. So stay tuned and we will be going into today's broadcast. We are going to have Mr. Kenny on. He is going to tell us a little bit about his business, his company that he started. So please stay tuned. Thank you guys. Okay, guys, thank you for stopping by the channel. Today I have Kenny on. Kenny is a guest today. He's going to come in and talk a little bit about his company. He's going to tell you how he got started and how you can get started and any good information on his company. Kenny is a husband. He's a father. He has a little dog back there we hear. And he's just going to pretty much just tell us about how he got started. He's been watching the channel for two years. And as you guys know, I did ask if you had a business or if you if you were good in finances or if you're a good social worker or any of that, I wanted you guys to come on the channel. And he asked if he could come on. And I was so delighted after speaking with him for an hour or two, I knew for sure I wanted him to come on and talk to you guys. So we are basically going to give him the floor, let him talk, tell you whatever he wants to tell you about his company, how you can get started and all of that good stuff. Go ahead, Kenny. How are you doing? Thank you for letting me uh, be on this platform. Um, I have 20 years of warehouse experience and six years of being in the military. Um, how I got started with this company is pretty much I was working in a warehouse. I was pretty much overworked, underpaid, and you know it's it's a stressful environment. Um, being in the state of Texas, you're subject to being fired at any time. Um, my last, without any kind of, uh, they don't have to really give you a reason. Right. Um, I saw it happen to my fellow colleague. They actually 
let him go and they outsource his department overseas. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that was the last straw, especially with working overtime. You want to catch the kids ball game. You got to right. tell them I can't, even though I promise, hey, I'll be there. You know, I got a mandatory overtime or you're off and they want to schedule a meeting when you're off. So you have to come in on your off day. Yeah. Um, so you yeah. know a lot about all of that overpaid, underpaid and, right. and all of that. Yeah. Yes. So what I did was uh, I started quiet quitting. Quiet quitting is you do the minimum you have to. Yes. And what I did was I researched how to uh, be an owner operator driving a van. So it's like expediting. Some people call it expediting. Some people call it hot shot. Mm -hmm. And so I researched through um, the YouTube platform mm -hmm. and I took notes. I researched the type of van I wanted. Um, this, you know, you gotta, I'm a mechanic, I'm mechanically inclined. So I didn't care about, uh, having a used van because I know how to work on vehicles. So I bought a used van, um, from Penske. If you don't know about Penske, Penske rents vans to, um, FedEx, UPS. Sometimes if UPS trucks break down or any type of, uh, transportation business mm -hmm. and um when their uh, vans or vehicles get at a certain age and certain mileage they'll sell it to the public okay so what i did was i contacted penske i saw the van i wanted mm -hmm. i told them um uh, we, we negotiated mm -hmm. i told them can you put brand new tires on it I want all the main, maintenance record from uh, from day one. They provided that, so I knew what they ha have done to the van. And um, I went the, new, the nearest Penske for me was Hot Springs, Arkansas, and that's when I went with my truck and trailer and picked up me and my son, picked up uh, my van, and from there it's been it's been awesome. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna back up. Um, when I was working for, I have my notes here. When I was working at the warehouse, it was like um, pretty much I was coming home and like suffering in silence. I had, as a husband and a father, you were the head of the household, you're the breadwinner, and you know you got to worry about the finances, make sure everybody is in good health. And then, you know, you have worked 10, 12 hours a day putting up with politics at the workplace, these ch changing policies, yes. um, you know, uh, micromanaging and then changing of, of the management. And you get, I get home, I used to get home and just like, just didn't want to really talk. I guess as a man, I just didn't want to talk. I kept it inside. And I think women, they're very, yo, yo, you are, y'all are very vocal. <laughs> yes. And uh, I just, you know, like I said, I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to find something that I was happy with. I felt like I was a slave to the system and I wanted to be free. So that's why I started my business as an owner operator, an independent contractor. That way I can, like today, I worked to about 12 and that was it. I made my money and, and that's it. Tomorrow, if I don't feel like doing anything, I have to, I can do that because I'm my own boss and it feels really, really good. And I'm so happy that I can do that. Okay. So before you get, you keep going. Uh -huh. So you bought a truck. What else did you need to get started? If, if there's a woman or a guy out uh -huh. there, okay. do this, what all would they need to get started besides a truck? And can you kind of give them somewhat of a ball figure of how much it would cost them? 
Okay. Now the, the cargo van, it cost, we, we, me and uh, Penske, we negotiated because like I said, it was a used van. It was a 2018 at the time. Uh, so it had some mileage on it, but the maintenance was good on it. And I test drove it. They had a policy of anything within 14 days, breaks, they'll take care of it. Um, I paid $20,000. Okay. So those, while I was quiet quitting, I was stacking my paper. Okay. Okay. So I researched how much a van costs. A brand new van is $60,000. Okay. Okay. So like I said, being a mechanic inclined, I decided the less overhead is to buy something, <laughs> buy something used. Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> right coming in. So that's fine. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So you okay. seventy thousand dollars. Now, how long did it take you to raise twenty thousand dollars? Was that because you know some people? I want to be honest because some people mm -hmm. are, are like really stressed out. They don't mm -hmm. have that type of money. What would you suggest for some man or woman that just really want to do their own thing? Could they? Did you actually start? At, with that or did you start in your car or how did you did you start like okay I, I started with the van but to keep the cost down because mm -hmm. I, I would highly recommend to get on much gear gaps as you can okay. and start out with a car okay. okay okay like my sister in Houston she wanted to do Uber and Lyft okay Okay, so she had a spare car that she could put the mileage on that because you don't want to put a lot of wear and tear on your car that you're going to use, you know, like your, your good car. Mm -hmm. Right. So she uh, got a got a car and started doing that. And I highly recommend you if you have to use your car, you know, if that's the only car you have, go ahead and do that. But a disclaimer is you're going to go through some tires oil changes and uh, yeah. you know how uh, uh, you, and you, you run the risk of a, a lot of wear and tear on your vehicle yes um, and for us also with the cargo van I had to get commercial insurance so that's another factor okay so all together I started out with 40,000. Okay. But I was been saving over the years. Okay. So it wasn't like, okay, in one year, I, so I've been saving over the years. I had my fun of what I want to do. You know, like I'm a guy. So I have like, okay, I want to buy car parts. I work on cars. I have, you know, I had that thing, you know, that fun. So I had that and I just start adding up, adding to it. Um, I had, I have another business also, which is I have an inspection station on my property in the DFW area. I think you guys have to do um, emissions testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so away with that, aren't they? That's what they're I doing away with that December 31st this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I moved out here into this rural area, I, like I said, I had money saved up. So I built in a, uh, a shop and I, to interact with the people in the community, uh -huh. I uh, got my license to be a vehicle inspector. Okay. So that's what some of the, some of the other money came from. Okay. So I had other business, uh, other business mm -hmm. before this business. Okay, gotcha. So I'm elevating. I know, right? <laughs> right, right. Okay. So like some people say you have to have two or three side hustles. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, yes. Okay. So it costs you $20,000 to get mm -hmm. that van. But, you know, some people can, like you said, start in their car, but it's going to put a lot of wear and tear on the car. Mm -hmm. So it'll be best if you have a designated car for any of that type of stuff. So you're not mm -hmm. wearing and tearing your car. So mm -hmm. to do what you're doing, is there any licensing? Do one need to get any license, need to go to school, need to be trained or any of that? Uh, just a driver's license. Okay. So you don't need that class, whatever that is. No, CDL, no, because once again, I'm in a cargo van. 
Okay. I'm under 10,000 10, pounds. I don't need to go to a truck scale. Okay. I don't have to have an electronic log book. Okay. Tell a little bit about that because we were off camera. Go ahead and tell about okay. you don't need all of that because I don't think I got okay. The The beauty of me being a cargo van mm -hmm. is I can, and I've done this before, uh -huh. I can go from picking up at a Dallas airport and drive to Miami and I can pull it off in 19 hours or something like that, 19 and a half, may say 24 hours. But if I was in a, a truck, I'm subject to an electronic logbook, which that uh, regulates you to maybe 12 hours, something like that. You got to take breaks and stuff like that. So uh, as the truck drivers are pulling over at night, I'm waving at them yeah, you don't do <laughs> and I keep going as long as safely as I can. Okay. Because time is money. And if I can get to a load, book a load, when I do, this is when I do OTR. Okay. When I book, when I book a load and take it to the next destination, I want to shower, get some rest and see if I can get another load out of there. Okay. As quick as possible. Okay. So there's no rules and regulations to anything that you do? Uh, just like I said, regular driver's license, state, you know, just you subject to the rules on the road, you know, the um, one thing I would highly recommend someone to get is get your TWIC card. Okay. The TWIC card pay, uh, the lows pay more. Okay. okay? It's like a security, uh, it's almost like a TSA type security thing where if I pick up at the airport, like I pick up uh, American Airlines, mm -hmm. anybody can't just come up there. You okay. have to be vetted because it's at the airport. Okay. <laughs> so they want to make sure they're going to, you, you're going to go to get your fingerprinted. I got fingerprinted and a background check. Uh, they have several places around the United States. The nearest one for me was Allen. I went to Allen. I paid one twenty five to uh, get it taken care of. My Twit card came in. Maybe um, I think within ninety days. Okay. Maybe less. I can't remember. I know when I came in, I was so excited that way I can I can get so, more money on the loads. So that card allows you to get higher bid on higher stuff. Okay. okay. It requires a Twit card okay. or. Say if a load comes up and says it needs a TWIC card, you got to be an American citizen and it's on a military base. Well, I'm the man with the plan. I got it. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, do they have to have been in the military to get that or can anyone get no, it? No, just a citizen that doesn't have like any type of, how do I say this, you know, kind of not, not labels, you know, like any kind of a bad record, not a terrorist or not, you know, not on a flight, you know. Okay. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So this is a lot of good information for the men because mm -hmm. they sometimes think, you know, they always say, oh, you forgot about us men. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I got you a guy on here giving you some good information to start mm -hmm. you a business. Mm -hmm. And also there's several avenues in this business. You don't have to go my route. You can, uh, what I've done since I'm doing a school months, I'm more local. As I go to, like, I just dropped off at an industrial complex in Irving. So I wrote down where I dropped off at, and it was several places. It was McCormick. It's like the seasoning company, sheet metal manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So what I would do on a certain day of the week, I'll take an admin day. I do some cold calling, or I just show up and I say, who's your shipping receiving manager? Okay. And I said, hey, here's my business card. I have a cargo van. Uh, do you happen to have any orders or less than truckload? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say no. Sometimes they say uh, yes, but we go through a broker. Okay, okay so who's your broker? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I call and I establish a relationship with a broker. Okay. And say, hey, you know, um, I'm a carrier company, uh, but broker is like a middleman. Mm -hmm. They, the Sometimes the companies don't want to just get anyone off the street to get their loads. They want to have a broker and a broker will put on, on a load board. Okay. I, we need a cargo van or a truck load or whatever. 
uh, start bidding on these loads. But that's a lot of middlemen. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to pay the dispatcher. You got, okay, the broker's going to get their cut from the company. Then it goes down to the dispatcher. Then it goes down to you. So what I've done was just pass out my business card and I was able to book direct shipper, shipping. What that means, I have a contract or business relationship with the company, no broker or anything, and that pays more money. For example, I have um, a load that uh, I pick up twice a week from Tyler, Texas, going into the DFW. That pays six hundred seventy-five dollars. So if I just do that one load and do don't do anything else, I'm satisfied with six seventy-five for the day, minus my gas and my maintenance, which is pretty much, you know, just the gas. Okay, so that six seventy-five for was for one day. The one load, yeah. Okay. So you can get any uh, several loads. Like today, I picked up uh, I picked up three loads. Okay. 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 Two that was from the towel shop warehouse mm-hmm. in Durant, dropping to two locations, and then the third one was just uh, on a gig app because I was already in the area waiting. And with me, I don't like sitting waiting. I like to be productive. And if I can make s- some more money on along the way, it was. I dropped off in Vail, Van Van Elsting from Sherman to Vail Elsting, and it was to a um, someone's house. It was a home a Home Depot order, and it was on the app called Rody. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that app. Okay. So we have. I'm gonna talk about the apps since say if you don't have the capital like I did, you can uh, number one app that I like and that you can do in your car. It's Walmart Spark. They pay really, really good. Okay. Yeah. The second one uh, is uh, like Uber Eats, uh, Instacart. Um, and then you have Roadie. Roadie, you can pick up in your cars, depending on what orders. Or like uh, you can pick up CVS orders. And speaking of CVS, also, if you have a cargo van or just a, a car, you can get into the mer- go go to the me- medical carrier route. Okay. Where you pick up medicine and deliver it to the nursing homes, uh, the pharmacies like Walmart, uh, CVS. So the transportation industry is not going nowhere. You see that they had that strike on the ports. But within what, three days to a week, they had to hurry up and negotiate something. So everything you have in your house had to be transported somewhere. So there's a lot of avenues you can do. Now, that's, uh, I know we discussed uh, with someone that has a record, because mm-hmm. most of these apps, uh, they're going to go through a background checker called Checker, background, uh, app, uh, background uh, company called Checker. And I just I just tell people you want to do this just be honest. Me I don't have a background so it just it just smooth sailing. And then they're also going to check your uh, driving record because they don't want someone that has DWIs or yeah several points on their uh, right yeah. So um, but because if you've been drinking you don't be on the road anyway. No 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 so. Uh, as far as, because you asked me this, as far as, say, people that I call it hiccups in life. Mm-hmm. Okay, people make mistakes, but how you overcome those mistakes. Okay, um, say someone has a felony. I've seen several guys, and you can look this up on YouTube. Okay? It's in the transportation uh, th- with their dually, and they, they get a dually and a trailer, and they'll pick up cars say if you are moving you have maybe four cars where you don't want to just drive get you know try to get people to drive your cars down to where you need you call a transportation company uh they'll quote you at a price and you agree to that price they come pick it up and they'll take it to your next destination okay and it's a lot of people that with felonies are getting into that that part of the, of the if you want to work for a trucking company, mm-hmm. 
um, it's it's basically subject to their regulations. You know what what they want. You know um, how when, when was the crime committed? You know was it ten years? What kind you know what kind of uh, crime it was? Okay. You know so it's to to their policies. Okay, so what you're doing could they do that or not? Yes, they can. Okay. Okay. You know. Um, like I said, it's a lot of avenues in this business. You can like junk removal. You can uh, pick up auto parts, general freight, like I do, general freight. Okay. Uh, you know, get a website, put your website out, mm -hmm. move furniture. Uh, like I tell people, if you have a truck, a trailer, mm -hmm. or or a van, mm -hmm. you never go for it. Right. There's always someone needs something done. To be, be to be moved. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. And you're able to stay home and be home with your family and everything, right? Doing this. Yes. Yes. What I do is during the school months, uh, I like to stay home. Okay. Way if I want to catch the kids' ball game, or mm -hmm. you know, I make my own schedule. So mm -hmm. that's the that's 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 the joy of being an independent, you know, owner operator. Okay. You know, you walk to your own beat, you know, your own beat. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you work for nine to five, then, you know, you might not make it home on time. You might, uh, it wants you to work overtime mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. So then, you know, your kids are disappointed, you know, right. you to make a game or something like that. So I tried to plan my schedule a day in advance okay. of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So like last night, um, I reached out to the company uh, that provided me with this the loads, and they said, "Yeah, we have two loads for uh, that can go to the DFW area and are six miles apart." Okay, okay it's no brainer for me. I can do that. Uh -huh. And then like, um, and then I can find something um, on my way back. But I, it was a, a lucrative amount where. I really didn't have to find anything back. I, I was satisfied with what I made today. And I'm going to be very transparent. You might not make, say you might have made $800 today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you might make $200. Mm -hmm. So right. it, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to be consistent. Mm -hmm. But you're making money. It just it, It's depending on uh, getting out there and building a business relationship with people. If you're gonna go through brokers or go through, like I said, people in the industrial complex, they'll uh, they'll give you a chance, you know, being booking directly with them. Um, but like I said, it's the number one uh, thing I notice is, I mean, the things that in this the cargo van game is general freight and being a uh, medical courier. Okay. That is. Uh, it's hot right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, will you one day have someone driving for you or are you just always going to do it yourself or what, what's in the future for you? Um, I would like to elevate to something else. Mm -hmm. I like what I'm doing. I mean, I could have buy four or five vans and have, mm -hmm. you know, people on the road going coast to coast. But I have no desire to do that. Okay. I like to have my, you know, have my van, mm -hmm. and just me and my oldest son. In the summertime, I was gonna say in the summertime, mm -hmm. me and him take it across country. He okay. and he, he drove for me. So as I'm sleeping, uh huh, uh, he's driving, okay. and then vice versa, and it's and we. They call it a uh, team driving. Okay. And the highs we made going cross country. Mm -hmm. This is not you know you got to subtract the the, uh, the gas and gas all gas and everything. That one week we made forty eight hundred dollars. That's just the gross. Okay, and you have to subtract the gas. Uh huh. So um, it could be done if you want to do team driving. I met several people that have their husband wife team uh -huh. yes or a boyfriend girlfriend team and they take it coast to coast mm -hmm. 
And I think that's really, really good because you have, everyone has the same mindset right. and determination to make money. And it's, and, and you, you know, that person, you know, sometimes in the truck driving field, unfortunately you, you have to, especially if you're a trainer, you don't know who you get. And yeah. I've seen several <laughs> disaster videos <laughs> of someone getting into it with the, 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 uh, the other person. Yeah. So you don't know who you're going to hire if you start hiring people. Yeah. yeah Cause you don't know how they live. You know, I, I try to, you know, they might live different than how I live. You know, my they might have some bad habits that I don't like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> and okay. I want to say this. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people waking up and realizing their worth. Mm -hmm. Right. We're waking up. We're realizing our worth. We realize yeah. why do I need to be stressed out, gaining weight, and dealing with the politics of this nine to five. Right. But you know, um, I really didn't think you guys went through too much like us women. <laughs> we hold it in. I said, hold it in. Because we are the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. You were the head of the household. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I get home, you know, dealing with, like I said, work. When I was working, uh, the nine to five. And then her wife says, something broke in the house. So I got to turn around, <laughs> figure out what's going on, fix the garbage disposal, or whatever the case may be. Then try to get dinner, see, you know, homework, mm -hmm. catch a ball, you know. So it's a lot, you know. But now, like I said, I'm happy. I'm free. It's a it's a weight off my sh my shoulder. Yeah. And, and and I say this: you don't have to get into the cargo. Just find your Find something in your niche in the society. Um, it's one guy. He's from Texas. He has a barbecue. He moved to Utah. He has a barbecue spot, and he's his his he has blown up. Uh, less barbecue. He does the oxtails, and he just he started out in his backyard, gained a following, and now he's probably making six figures or more. So, uh, it's. A lady uh, I talked to, I, I just ate at her restaurant. Mm -hmm. She started out uh, cooking in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. They moved from something next, uh, building a little, uh, converting a carport into like a little restaurant next door to her place. Then from there, she elevated to getting a food truck. And from there, um, she moved into a restaurant. So, if you have a drive, determination, you can do anything possible. You know, just do your research, uh, get your ducks in a row. Don't just quit. Have an exit plan. Like I did, I had an exit plan, you know, and it will work. And I, I don't want, I, I, I don't want to, uh, uh, and I never look back, you know, but now, that I have this established. You ask me if I'm going to have people drive for me. My next step, and I just found this out, and it's called non-emergency transportation. Okay. It's a lot of disabled people and elderly people that, that don't have transportation or they cannot drive themselves to a specialist. So in the rural area, um, I noticed that um, there's a lot of elderly people that just have to work around their caregiver schedule to see if they can if they can drive them to the doc's appointment. Well, I figured if I can, I already have my uh, a, a business a bank account, the EIN, the LLC. And that's another thing I'm gonna say. Get those business bank account LLC and uh, make it legal, <laughs> make, make it legal, you know, through the state of Texas. Now, if you're a veteran like I am, your LLC is free, you just go through the proper channels and it's free. Okay, okay? 
And in a business bank account, you can get it, you know, if you have a regular bank account somewhere, you can just tell them, hey, I want a business bank account. And then um, and then from there, you can start. You want, What you want to do is you want to separate your business from your, your personal stuff. That way, if you need the capital, and you want to buy four or five vans and you can. Uh, they see that, OK, this is how much I'm making per year. Um, this person has, and that's another thing, get a Dun & Bradstreet number. It's sort of like, uh, so when they check your Dun & Bradstreet, it's almost like Equifax, uh, TransU and all that. That way, they, like I said, you want to separate your personal stuff from the business. That way that um, they can see that everything's legitimate. This person is, you know, like I said, we, we, need, we can take a shot on them. We can, we can give them the capital. So because once you get started and you get to going good, it's always where banks will then back you up. But sometimes they don't back you up in the beginning. In the beginning, you have to do your own saving like you did in your mm -hmm. own. You know, you have to show that this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it seems like people then get behind you and say, OK, you know, let's, you know, give him the money. Let's do this then. But you have to have that determination, like you said. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Not quitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just don't give up. Don't quit, guys. Don't. Yeah, don't, don't give up. And then uh, it's one guy that when I was on live this morning, he was like, well, I mean, he bought a van and he hadn't had any work since August. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, I asked him, I said, hey, you know, you must be doing something wrong because from the jump, I what I did was sign on to a carrier company. One of the biggest carrier companies is low one panther you probably if you if you guys look on the road and you see these vans some of them are just white with no writing on it uh -huh. some have writing on it those are expediters they have loads in a van going from point a to point b so like i said low one panther boat express and v3 they're all the top uh carrier companies if you just sign on to a carrier company, they will find you loads. Okay, they will find you loads, and and then they'll give you a, a weekly pay payout. You know, and that's that way you don't have to go to the through the headache or trying to find some loads yourself. But then once you want to elevate, right. so once I did that for about a year, my authority. And you get your authority. If you look on those the 18 wheels, you see US dot so and so, so and so, like one, two, three, four, whatever. That's your your, your dot number and you, that's your DOT number, as they call it. And then you have MC number, which is your motor carrier number. Mm -hmm. Um, you pay the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, better call FMCSA, um a fee, and then that way when you venture out to book and loads with broker, they see that your authority has aged. When I mean age, that means that you're established and people can trust you. Because here's a funny story. When I started doing this, I was wondering, I said, why am I, am I getting disconnected? I was getting hung up on, you know, what it was is my authority was an age and they, and they uh, didn't trust, pretty much they didn't trust you. But once your authority has age and they see that you don't have any kind of blemish on your record of, uh, you know, um, messing up a load or anything like that, you can uh, get more me is to elevate to something else. And that's what I want to do is to go into the non-medical transportation field. Um, I had a guy that contacted me um, that he does government contracting. That's another avenue. Government contracting, that's the, you can, it, it pays a lot. And um, every so many, so many years, the government wants to get bids on uh, services. So uh, one of the services that popped up was a non-medical transportation service for the Dallas VA. 
Okay. So if I had everything in order and I had, say if I had an already established company mm -hmm. that uh, maybe had four or five of those shuttle buses with the uh, the wheelchair ramp, I could put on a, put put in a bid and through the uh, to the federal government and possibly win. Now, okay. for example, the last one, because the guy told me the last one was five hundred thousand dollars. It was a five-year contract for. I think it was five hundred or two hundred fifty. I'm gonna say two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, if you had, like I said, if you already had a well, all your your yeah. shuttle buses and everything lined up, and all you gotta do is pay for your expenses as your operating expenses, you probably can, you know, walk out with, you know, a decent amount of, ch you know, change, you know, so. That's somebody that's already established, though. That that's already established, yeah. So what I want to do is pretty much start out with one and then um, and go from there. And then maybe, um, you know, you have to vet everybody, uh, your, your potential, uh, uh, someone you want to hire. Um, as far as your driving record and everything, but if it was me, you know, if like I said, people have hiccups, I'll I'll be the first one to hire someone with a failing. I'll give someone a shot, as long as you show to work on time and do what you need to do. That, 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 that that's what matters to me. That you are hardworking, you got a work ethic, yeah. and you had a good driving record. Right, because sometimes they can't get a job and they get right. frustrated. And then mm -hmm. sometimes people will change their life. So they can change mm -hmm. their life and they know that, okay, if I don't do right, I may not get another job. Mm -hmm. See, us regular people know we can keep going getting jobs, but somebody mm -hmm. with felony noted if they don't do right, they may not get another chance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, end up getting a pretty good person um, that has a record. And I know when it comes to like the internet, everybody can come on. So that's why I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you. You know, could they have a felony or anything on their record? Mm -hmm. You know, or even what is it? It's lower things like misdemeanors and stuff. You know, I guess like you're saying, as long as it's over some years and they're doing right, trying to change their life, you mm -hmm. know, it's open. Mm -hmm. well, that's open. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Tell me, how did you get the name the Cargo Hustler? How did that come about? <laughs> okay, well, there's a lot of people. When I, like I said, I, I'm. I, I can probably take it more serious and probably be up with the, the followers that you have. Mm -hmm. But the videos that I have produced, mm -hmm. people and the people see me in public and say, you be really, I've seen your videos. You be really hustling. You be really <laughs> hustling. Okay. Or someone said, you're a go-getter. So I got up one morning, I said, I'm the cargo hustler. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, is your business really called the cargo? Is that your what's your business? No, 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 no. They, uh, oh. I, you know, it's, it's, it's something online. else. But, but oh. yeah, I just like I said, I just put that on there. You know, there's a lot of people that have different. We call it pseudonyms or something like that on <laughs> YouTube. So, it's 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 catchy, you know. And I don't know. I, I'm I'm stick with it, you know. So. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for giving back to the community. That's what mm -hmm. I think it's all about. And since I started doing these videos on the nine to five, on all the job situations, I've been asking people to just come on and just help people out. I mean, so many people will be so thankful that you came on and talked mm -hmm. about it because there's people that don't know about it. And then there may be some that knew about it, but they didn't know they needed this or that, or or they mm -hmm. could do it without having that CDL. Because I always thought that you had to have that in order to do what you're doing. So that's- No, not with a, not, not, not with a, uh, a cargo van. That's right. And on a box truck, mm -hmm. if it's over a certain weight, if it's over 26,000 pounds, you're gonna have to have a CDL. Okay. But with a box truck, the big one, a 26 footer, you subject to the electronic logbook. Okay. Okay. So I want less about reg okay. mm -hmm. regulations only. Yeah. That's what she was asking me about was that e-log book. And I was like, I'm going to ask him about that because I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. I want less regulation. All I want to do is, and, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm a, 
It might not seem like it, but I'm an introvert. Okay. So I don't like, you know, I'm not really a talk of the person, you know, I'm a people person, but I just want to less interaction. I want to just get my pick, uh, talk with the people at the pickup, drop off and let them know. I mean, on the way, let the person know that, Hey, I'm on my way, drop off, get it signed and go to the next one. That's just me. I'm, I'm all about when, when it comes to business, I'm all about business, you know, because when you get to all of that other stuff, it's just a lot of paperwork. You know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of rules and regulations, mm -hmm. which if you do what you're supposed to do. You don't have to have all those rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I thought, I, this may be something else. I thought that that, what she's talking about, is that also where they make sure that like the drivers aren't driving like for a long period of time without taking breaks? Is that... Would yeah, that's the that's it's called an e-log, electronic okay. log book. Okay. Because see, here's the thing. It's almost like you're a target. Mm -hmm. You're driving an 18 wheeler. Uh -huh. The DPS office is gonna pull you over. They're gonna look and they might do you like a, a level one, two, or three. They're gonna check all the, they can check every, you know, check and see the tires good, nothing hanging off. Then they're gonna ask what well, number one, they're probably gonna ask for that log book. Okay. You know, well, well, it's electronic law book now. They want to see that you're not cooking, you're not, you know, uh, doing something illegal. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why they regulate that because there's a lot of people falling asleep on the wheel, not taking breaks. Right. And I'm all about that, you know, because you know, I have a family and might and I want to come home to, and right. I got to be at someone hits me and it turned out that they weren't following the rules. Right. So that can be kind of good, you know, to right. make sure that they're not driving, you know, and not resting and all the Right. Things. And then you want to make sure that and also what I say when they do that like a, a level one inspections or whenever they you see they get the 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 uh this like the the scales, they want to make sure that you know you're not over the weight. You know, it's all about safety. And I don't have no issue with those regulations uh, if if I was going to drive a truck. But like I said, I just like the, my, my cargo van. Um, I know someone asked me, where do you sleep? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I go over the road, I sleep in my cargo van. I, it's like it's like you are a truck driver. Mm -hmm. Okay, some guys outfit their cargo van with a uh flat screen tv refrigerator uh you know a laptop uh, the diesel heater because some guys are doing this year round and they're taking it coast to coast otr which means over the road and you can't just <clears throat> can't have your car idling all the time that's not good for your car to idle mm -hmm. so you want to have some type of comfort like say it's getting cold so a diesel heater equipped with diesel heater, or you see sometimes on some of these vans, they have equipped with an air conditioner on top. So um, a good, um, say if you're driving someone, a good owner, a owner will have those stuff already equipped mm -hmm. in a van for the driver, because you want to keep that driver, especially as a good driver. You know, you want them to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, now, someone asked, where do you shower? Where you shower at the truck stop or if you have a anytime fitness mm -hmm. uh, membership, which is good. Uh, yeah. You can do that because those trucks, the truck stops can be expensive between 15 and 18 dollars a shower. No, oh, my. Sometimes what I do is I gain points, okay? What I mean points is if I go to Love's or go to fill up at Love's or uh, fill up at Pilot, which is a, those are the top two truck stops, you get points. Those points can go towards, depending on how many gallons of fuel mm -hmm. you use, mm -hmm. those points can go towards uh, so many dollars off of coffee or uh, goes towards uh, gaining a free shower. Oh, okay. So 
So a lot of times, by the time you get from, say you drove from New York to Texas, mm -hmm. you might have two showers, you know, two free showers or something like that. Okay, okay well, that's good for the guys to know. So if someone wanted to contact you, um, I, I know you have a YouTube as well. It's the Cargo Hustler. So guys, you can go over there. And what I would suggest you do, because you're busy, mm -hmm. I would get like the paid prescription deal where guys can come over there and ask you questions. And not that you're charging people, but this is your mm -hmm. time, you mm -hmm. know, where, because I'm sure there will be more questions after this. I will not be able to answer any of them. Right, right. You will have to go and ask him. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be very good because, I mean, you're giving to the community, but you also, you know, it's your time. It would mm -hmm. be really good if you probably opened up one of those, the paid prescriptions where you can talk to the guys and give them this type of information. I mean, this is really good information. Mm -hmm. People are tired of these jobs that are driving them crazy and stressing them out and working them all day and where they don't get a break and they can't go home to their family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'll think about that. Um, it's yeah. It's several guys like me that's doing it that have more subscribers than I have and are well established. Because, like I said, how I got started, I looked at them guys. Mm -hmm. And yep. they have, uh, it's one, there's a group on Facebook. Um, if you type in cargo van expediting group, okay. there's a group on Facebook that uh, has maybe tens of thousands of people like me that's doing this. Okay, well, you can ask questions. You can uh, find, if, you, if you're looking for a dispatcher, you can find a dispatcher or you're looking for some loads or uh, just some advice. Okay. okay. Um, or um, if you want to get started and you have like, it was one guy, he's offering uh like a five hour class for like $85. Yep. Yeah. It go from, from the beginning all the way to, you know, getting and driving out the driveway and getting your first load. You just have to, like I said, social media is your friend. Look up. It's, it's, it's on YouTube. Yes. YouTube. You know, you can learn everything. Somebody I don't know. I'm going to go. Google. They, back in the days, Google it. When Google started, Google it. I, well, you know who owns YouTube? It's all Google. It's Google. Yeah. It all, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. We don't want to take any more of your time. Okay. I know you want to get to your family and everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for stopping by and giving this information to the guys. And guys, when I'm editing this video, I will put his information yeah. up. Phone number, email. It's right there. It's a Google Voice. So um, if I don't answer, I will. Uh, I'll. If I'm between loads, I will uh, try to. The best is to email me. Like on Sundays, if I'm around, call me. I try to have something on Sunday where people can call me. I go live and people <laughs> can call important. me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, be careful because <laughs> I've realized this when, when the black <laughs> you're going to be like, who the message is? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So be careful what you're asking for. I'm telling you, people are tired of this. As you can mm -hmm. see on my page, people are tired of the nine to fives. Mm -hmm. So you are probably going to have to get like the paid. That way you're giving them the information, but you're okay. getting something out of it so that okay. you're not just, you know, all of your time being given because mm -hmm. you have a family, you know, okay. you want to get something. And it's telling me again, we are 10 getting minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got 10 minutes. You know, I actually realized when I clicked off earlier, we had eight more minutes. And I was like, why was it kept telling me it was about to finish? Well, we're, we're, we're learning. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, this, you might, when, when all said and done, you probably interview thousands of people, you know, so. I'm I'm trying to get some more people on because people are yeah. really stressed out and they need some help. Mm -hmm. I pray for the people, but people need more than prayer. They need some actual practical things that they can do. And you came mm -hmm. and gave them a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. And so if I were you, you know, you can have your wife help you with that and getting that paid thing going on YouTube. Yeah. That She's way, when they're coming over, 
you're getting something for it. You're giving them value, but you're getting something as well. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it's an exchange. If you're going to mm -hmm. give your time and if someone's going to be calling you and, and emailing you and all of that, you're going to want to, mm -hmm. you know, work that out. So. I, I, I'm in with this positivity over negativity. Yes. Get up with a positive attitude. Yes. Uh, speak stuff into existence. Mm -hmm. I spoke this in existence. It was okay. one year out before I got this. I, I told my son, uh -huh. my oldest son, we were driving. I said, I'm going to get a cargo van. I think and I'm going to do this. I did my research. I worked for someone. That's another thing I didn't mention. I worked for someone, kind of learned the ropes. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I went and got my, my van. So you can do anything possible in this life. Okay. You just have to have determination, the drive. And you can you can do it. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. I'll have all of your information. I'll put it on the screen, and I will mm -hmm. also put it in the description as well when I put this video up. My plans is to upload both of these parts today and have them on for tomorrow, so you'll be able to see it tomorrow. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for giving back to the community. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye.